the start of the 2023 hunting season, and for our family, it's a time of excitement and anticipation. It's the opportunity to spend time in nature, test our skills, and bring home food for our loved ones. For our family, it's a chance to fill up our freezer with sustainable, organic meat that we feel good about eating. We've been planning this trip for months, and once again, we find ourselves at Khoi Khoi River Lodge in the Northern Cape of South Africa. As we move through the felt, we keep our eyes peeled for any sign of movement. African antelope move in large herds. This means many eyes that can potentially pick you out and spook the herd. When we spot the springbok, we move quietly and deliberately as we settle into our sniper post in this rocky outcrop, waiting for them to step into range. We need to take quite a few animals off the field just to keep sort of the sustainability going. There's just too many animals. So we're after some springboks, some impala. I'm shooting my dasher in the tripod. We've got animals all around us. My brother's here on the camera to give you guys close-ups. Vian's on that camera. I'll show you guys what that visual looks like. They sitting nicely in the shade. I'm sitting on these black rocks. That's basically an oven. Got some grass tucked into my tripod just to sort of break up my profile a little bit. But this should be action-packed because we've got quite a bit of shooting to do. So I'm excited. I moved positions a little bit. We're still on the same little rocky outcrop. We've got about six, seven hundred animals probably in 400 meters from us but we've got no shot the wind has started pumping as it usually does when we do this so things are very likely going to escalate very quickly from here on him with a steady hand and a deep breath, close my bolt as I go through my shot process. I make my wind call, and the shot clacks. The ram falls instantly, and we know we've made a clean kill. For me, this is what hunting is all about. Ethical, clean, Kill shots. Een van jullie ooit kies met de drie rechts staan. Nog een van jullie. Die langer kans die een van jullie drie. Met die pinkopje. On this trip, I'm not just harvesting animals for my household, I'm also shooting a few animals for my brother and for my parents. Things happen very quickly now. We were sitting at the back there, 250 meter head shot there. Then we had to pan around really quickly, 100 meter shot here. And then I moved my tripod for a third time. We came up the hill like this. Look how unstable this is. I was holding this down with one hand. I think my brother got the angle from the other side. And we clapped her by 
I had that little ridge over there at about 180, I think. I can't remember exactly, but Vian was on it as always, giving me the range as she's moving. And uh, I dialed 0.3 and drucked her, and she was in her tracks. And Vian said to me after the first shot, like, I stayed in my optic for quite a while after the shot. And I always have this saying, like, you know, and we've experienced this before where they drop like a stone and then somehow they were just unconscious or something and as you go to them they get up so I always try and stay in my optic a little bit just make sure everything is as it should be before we move on to the next one but that happened very quickly and that's one of the things I liked about Driven Hunts is it's action packed once the action starts going we had a bit of an opportunity here to shoot her but I did not want to repeat shooting through like little branches because from behind me there was like a little bush so we just bided our time until she stepped into that opening and it was it was game over when she gave us that opportunity. Okay, let's go get them. As the day draws to a close, we check out a ridge near a lake on the property, ending the day with a spectacular sunset and animals everywhere. So we started things off bright and early, um, five minutes into our hunt today we shot a beautiful warthog. We're on a bit of a warthog mission, they do a lot of damage to the agricultural side of the farmers businesses here so to start things off with this guy, I think this is, might be even the biggest one I've ever shot. Um, so happy days! We're on another section of the property now. The landscape's completely changed. There's a lot of trees and apparently a lot of kudus. We saw some fresh tracks here now. So we're going to work our way down to the river and uh, hopefully set up on the top kudu down in the river. Little to no wind. I changed things up to the 6.5 SS. Turns out the scope rings on my dasher was loose. Um, so don't know how that happened. But luckily we spotted it on that last war dog. Cause the shot was way further right than where I was aiming. So we just fixed that, but we're not on zero because we tried to shoot like a little bottle. So we just changed it up. I always have two rifles with me. Two is one, one is none. Let's go. Busted on the kudus, which is generally how it goes when you walk and stalk on kudus. 
We saw two young bulls this morning. They had like a turn and a little, about two, three years old. Those technically taste the best, but they still have a lot to offer towards the farm and, you know, growing the population. So we always leave those, try and look for the mature animals. Um, horn size has never really been a massive thing for me. Obviously, I'd, everybody would love to shoot, you know, a 65-inch kudu or a 64-inch kudu. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't in the cards for this morning. But the day is long. <laughs> Thought it was a walk. After a late lunch, Brian the Felt plan is to head back to the lake area to make our final stand. shooting. Shooting off my sky pod all the way canted. I had my other hand underneath my grip to stabilize the shot 245 meters. Um, but yeah this is the position sort of yoga style come up a little bit so I can show you guys. Like yoga style like this and then firing over like this reminiscent of the position I felt my, found myself in when I was doing the felt kit match not too long ago. Like a little shot. <laughs> Bro, the keep position is hilarious. Hold on. Nice. So, we just got back. Had only almost immediate another stalk. Had an impala you. She was at about 220 meters across the dam, which would have been such an epic shot. And um, I think she saw something else because we didn't spook her. But she, like, looked. And Vian was checking her through his binoculars and she wasn't looking in our direction. And then she just sort of lightly trotted out of view just over the dam. So it's a pity. Because that, that would have been a flipping awesome one to get. Um, and we're running out of daylight, so hopefully if we stick around, we may be able to get something else. we were there instantly expired that's how we like to hunt wow 
a little bit tricky with the wind. No rear support. I cannot stress how amazing it is. The feeling of putting an animal down instantly. It's so awesome. Of course, you're on the farm. They don't think they can get through another drought. They just have too many animals on the farm. So sitting around for an hour waiting for her to show up. Absolutely worth it because we were literally my brother was on the way to get our stuff so that we can get the last drone shot and call it a day. And damn, what a way to end our hunt at Koi Koi. Let's go get her. Five five spouse. Flippin' birds. Okay, never mind, we're not done. There are some wall tones on the watering hole. Let's do this. Ach, je nog geen. Broer je recht? Af. Broer is die in? Achter die in. In met stoel. Ik ben nog gewoon in de camera van je. Schrok. Ja. Zet hem erin. Nog geen. Dat was ziek. Stoot hem. Is er ook? Hier nou rook het vrij, als onder boord je op 200 bloem. Maar op 200! Maar op je kom je zo. Die wat hij drinkt zit aan, die is op. Dan heb ik je achterste in die auto. Bro, en ik heb het op 1-2 hier. Oké. Oké. We laughing now. Wat is die ding? Because of what my brother said. He said, the shot is so far. There's a board to turn off at the next town. To be quite honest. I was aiming for the first one. I just saw the second one. To a front flip. <laughs> Obviously, on a serious note, we are taking lives here, but these things just run rampant. How many? How much damage do you think each one of these does every year, or as a as a whole to your agricultural side of the business? At least a hundred thousand rand per year as an agriculture as a whole. That's a lot of money. So, when it comes to varminting, we've got a much different philosophy. You know, you just want to you just want to kill them. Essentially, we just want to get them out off the farm because they just do an immense amount of damage holy mother that's how we end the trip yes boy <laughs> as we pack the meat into the coolers we begin the long journey home feeling grateful for the opportunity to provide for our family of sustenance that is not only delicious, but also sustainable and ethical. Vian, was this round pregnant? Two springbok magically appeared. I see. Oh, it's and how many? Yeah. Six springbok in a row, bok in a row. Wow. And you still play for the yellow. Right, so we got everything loaded on the back of the bucky in the box suck. We got all of the stuff we shot. A six spring box, one impala, and the roan with the bow. It was an amazing trip. All the war talks went to the lovely staff that host us at Koi Koi. I recently shot a whole bunch of war talks, so my fridge is still full of salamis, cheese, sausages, grillers, salamis, cabernosis, all of the lovely things we make from the war talks. So these ones have gone to the farm workers. Guys, we'll be back at Koi Koi in May this year. If you want the opportunity to come and hunt with me and my brother, that opportunity is going to be linked down below. It's going to be super cool. If you're an international guy and you need rifles, we can help you out with that too. You know, it's going to be cool. And it's possibly going to be one of the cheapest ways you can ever come and hunt in South Africa if you're an international hunter and you want to join us. So link to that will be down below. My friends are over there getting in their car and that is a wrap for this trip at Koi Koi River Lodge. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.
each time I sit down with my family or my friends to enjoy a meal of venison that I've harvested. I reflect on the experience and the importance of sustainable hunting in today's world. For us, it's not just about filling up our freezer, but about connecting with nature and providing for our family in a way that aligns with our values.